Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John Minton, and it is Sunday, so it's time for another weekly reader. It's time for a check-in. I hope everyone had a wonderful week out there. I hope the stress levels were not too bad. I hope all the reads were five stars. Uh, I hope everything with your family, friends, life in general was just tip-top wonderful in this holiday season. Uh, whether you observe in any way you observe, I hope it's a great, great season for you as we're barreling towards 2024. Um, I had a pretty good week. Not too bad. I'm not looking forward to my week coming up. There's a lot going on. So this has been what I've been looking forward to, to just sit with you and not think about what's coming up. Just kind of talk books for a little bit um, and just enjoy myself. So thank you so much for joining me. What did I get up to reading this week? Um, I finished my Indie Read of the Month, Lost Souls by Ryan Skeffington. This was a very, very interesting book. I hadn't done sci-fi in a while, and this was a breath of fresh air for me. Ryan, thank you so much for sending it to me. Um, it's a lot going on for a thin volume here. We, we've got a striated cast system in the future. It opens up with, I think, one of the most visceral, brutal scenes of coming out of cryosleep I've ever read, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and, and then it segues into the future when this planet has been used up and we're living on a ring world. And it's got kind of a, a nucleus where the celestials live, which is the uppity, uppity ruling class. And from there, we have five layers of a striated caste system. And why are they split up like that? Because to keep this ring world a spinning, there has to be a lot of work done. And what do we give up in our humanity to make sure some of these layers of caste system uh, come through with this amount of work to keep this whole thing going? It's very, very interesting. And then, of course, as you start finding the answers of what what's going on behind the ring world, how it was built, how how we how we can live on it, I don't want to give too much away. Um, and as those shoes start to drop, we start to see, uh, as always happens, um, you know, kind of a fight back from the lower caste, kind of an uprising, if you will. Um, and and there's. Um, there's like a bread and circuses component where uh, the masses are fed kind of like gladiator games to keep them complacent and keep them watching and complete com, com, have their bloodlust focus somewhere else as opposed to the ruling class. Um, and some of the uprising springs from this. And it's, it's very, very interesting. It's very, very involved. And if I were to say anything about it, I think it's compressed a little bit. I could have gone on for quite a few more pages here uh, to have some of this fleshed out. Um, but it was, it was a very, very interesting read. If you're looking for a thought-provoking sci-fi, I absolutely would recommend it. After that, I had a short story on my e-reader uh, that is uh, 1.5 of the Keg and the Dam series by Jonathan Mulberry, and I just wanted that little tidbit, that werewolf showdown, that fight between Kagan, a son of the Poison Rose, and a group of werewolves. It was just sounded like it would be just a good time for me, so I, I snuck that in and read that short story in before I went on and finished... Excalibur by Bernard Cornwell. Now, this. I know a lot of people say book two, Enemy of God, is their favorite book out of the trilogy. For me, I think this was my favorite book. I loved the way this wrapped up. I loved the whole thing about how this leaned into the magic of it all, and I understand it's it's historical fiction and people think of it as historical fiction, but for me, the overarching theme of there is a magic system in play here. That magic system is the faith we put into our belief systems, the, the willpower that we funnel into that belief system. And as the old gods are giving way to the new monotheistic ideals of Christianity as it moves across England, and that tug of war between the souls of the people involved and Merlin is the last druid trying to hang on to it. 
I, for me, it read absolutely like an amazing fantasy trilogy, and I, I just, I could not have loved it more the way it wrapped up. All of the major moments of Arthurian legend were there, from T. H. White to to Mallory. They they were all had a a moment in the sun, and it was just so fun to see them all through this lens. And I would absolutely say to anyone that has not picked this up because they feel, oh, historical fiction is not my bag. You know, it's I, I need something a little bit, a little bit funner. I need something a little bit magical. This will absolutely scratch that itch. I have to consider this as fantasy. There is a magic system involved, and it is the magic system that we see in our everyday lives, in uh, our ideals of faith, and what lies behind the veil, and how we funnel our very selves into those ideals and belief systems so that we can organize and define our realities around us. And the realities around us are what is at stake and what is at play in this trilogy, and I could not have loved it more. And all told from the point of view of Durful Cardin as Arthur and these other larger-than-life figures move about him, uh, we are able to connect to the everyman spear carrier Durfel that is in Arthur's orbit and pulled along with him on all these adventures. And I just could not have loved this more. Absolutely, I think one of the best reads of my year for, for sure, no doubt. After that, guys, it is time. I'm starting the last read of the year. My last two weeks of 2023 will be spent reading Words of Radiance, book two in Stormlight Archive. Now, I'm about 100 pages in because I did start this today, and wow, it, it, it's everything that I left off with Way of Kings. Um, I just think this, 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 there's a reason why I think this is the highest rated book on Goodreads, like, Overall, and and I, I I don't even want to get into anything except it was so amazing to see uh, Shalon again and Jason and um, Kaladin and to see everyone again and to see where they are and to see as we're getting more and more blanks filled in here about what's really going on with the sprint and how there's two groups of them and how it's split between natural like natural science and emotional quotient and how they I, if philosophically this just completely speaks to me and I have loved it so far and I, I can't say very much about it because I'm just getting into it but I I do think I may owe an apology to some other booktubers because they've had me on and I was so thrilled to be on their channels about what my favorite read of the year was and I think this if this keeps going the way it, I think it's going after the first 100 pages, my book of the year could be taken away by my last read of the year in, in this last two weeks of 2023. So uh, that's pretty much it for me. I mean, what's coming up? This is going to take me all the way through the end of 2023 reading-wise, so I don't have another book coming up. I do have a quick road trip this week coming up. I'm going to have to make a quick drive down to New Orleans uh, and it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be a fun road trip, which kind of goes against the grain thinking about New Orleans. You would think that being a, a fun road trip, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a fun one, but the good thing about it is I am going to take it as an opportunity to try some audio books. Normally I don't like audio books. I have a hard time focusing. My mind will wander. Um, but I am going to try and listen to Dungeon Crawler Carl by Matt Dinneman on the way down to New Orleans. And then I'm going to listen to The Black Tongue Thief uh, by Christopher Buhlman on the way back up from New Orleans. So I should be able to get two more reads this month, even though this is going to take me through to the end of the year. So, um, And doing all that driving, I won't be able to do the reading that I'm normally used to. So I might have to play a little catch up with this. But... Other than that, I couldn't be more excited to, to squeeze another couple books in there uh, using the audiobook method, so I will be able to come to you sometime a week from today. I know a week from today is Christmas Eve, and I'm sure a lot of us will be with our families, but I think we will get their weekly reader out maybe a little early or something that day, or I don't know, maybe we'll get it out 
the day before. I'm not sure. I, I haven't quite made a decision yet, but uh, we'll, we'll be out there someday, maybe the day after, day before. Not the day after, because that's Christmas Day, but maybe the day before. We'll figure it out, uh, but we won't miss a weekly reader with you guys. Um, last week on the channel, we had such a great week. Oh my gosh, we had our uh, talking story with tubers for the month last week. We got to talk with Josh from Red Fury Books. It was so great to be able to talk to him face to face. I've been talking with him through comments on his channel and my channel back and forth. And uh, we've been setting up a buddy read that we have coming up starting next month. We're going to read Brian Lee Durfee's trilogy with some other great booktubers. And uh, it was just so much fun to be able to talk to him and be able to find out a little bit about his artist's journey through music. And I love the way he brings his artist journey and, and through the lens of all of his interpretations and uh, reviews for books on his channel and, and the vast array of different types of books he reads on his channel from uh, things about music to biographies about musicians and composers to um, writers from all over the world, not just, not just sci-fi, fantasy, uh, but all types of things, and I absolutely love his channel for that. So it was so wonderful to get to talk to him. Uh, I hope he had a good time as well. And then we wrapped up our week last week with our November wrap-up, everything that we got up to in November here on the channel, everything we read, we went through, uh, and, and took a good hard look at. It was an amazing reading month like they all have been since I started BookTube because thanks to you and other booktubers, I'm taking your recommendations of what I read next, and I have not had a clinker yet. So November was a great, great month like they all have been lately. Um, so coming up this week, what do we have to look forward to on the channel here on Talking Story? It's going to be a big week, guys. Okay, so our Tuesday video is going to be our... In our interview, we're going to talk artist journey with Jonathan Mawberry, New York Times bestselling author, five-time Bram Stoker Award winner. Jonathan Mawberry is going to join us here on the channel. That video will be up on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what made him first start writing. We're going to talk about the Joe Ledger series. We're going to talk about his moving into epic fantasy with his keg in the damn trilogy that's wrapping up in 2024 we're gonna try and cover it all i have been enjoying his works for i get i think decades i think i've been reading this guy for absolute decades and he is such i've seen him on ask me any things and other things he seems like such a super guy and i can't wait to talk to him so that will be up tuesday and then our thursday video i can't put it off any longer guys i have held off and held off and held off as long as I possibly can or could to put out my best of fantasy series list because I wanted to catch up on some things that I had just completely missed. Um, all these recommendations from coming on BookTube that I, I had fallen out of reading for so long, so I wanted to catch up on some of these series before I put my best of series list out there. But I'm running out of year, so I don't have any more time. So Thursday will be my best of fantasy series, my top 10 fantasy series list. That will be the Thursday video. And I have gone over it several times, and I'm going to go over it several more times before Thursday. This is a hard one. This is tough. First of all, the hardest thing about a top 10 list in fantasy series is there's only 10 slots. That's where I run into trouble. If I had more slots, I'd be good. Um, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to abide by the rules. I'm going to break the rules like every other book booktuber does. I'll probably have some honorable mentions before we get into the top 10 because I just can't not mention some of these series that have meant so much to me. Uh, but that will be out on Thursday. And um, God, what else? That's, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Uh, TV, I'm caught up on... Um, for All Mankind, still great this year. It's starting to ramp up. I can see we're, we're getting close to that big climax, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to all be worth it. It's been a bit of a slow burn this year, but I, I can see where it's going, and I'm very excited. Uh, I did catch up this morning on Legacy of uh, Monarch of Monsters, and that has been a lot of fun. Uh, this episode this week, we get a lot more um, appearance of, uh, of our good friend Godzilla, which, which made it a lot of fun. Um... I actually had a movie night last night. I watched a movie. Um, I haven't done that in quite a while, but 
I noticed that everything, everywhere, all at once was on Prime. I had not seen that movie yet. So I streamed it last night, and wow, that was, what a great heart that film has. Uh, at its core, a wonderful heart, amazing performances, just, just stunning in a lot of ways. I absolutely enjoyed my time with it. I thought it was just great, and I... I would say to Kevin Feige and all the people at Marvel or anywhere else trying to do a multiversal type story, if you haven't seen that yet, that's something you should take a look at. It was great in its complexity and at the same time a, 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 a romp. It was just crazy and fun. Um, so it, it was just worked on so many levels and I really enjoyed it. Uh, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Um, please be good to yourselves. The holidays can be a stressful time. Take some time for yourself. Get some five-star reads in there, if at all possible. And we will see you this coming week with some amazing videos. Hit me up in the comments down there about how your week went. Hit me up down there about how you hope this week before the holiday week is going to go for you. What do you have lined up? And I hope it's everything you're wishing for. Uh, I hope you get everything under the tree you're wishing for. I hope it's a big book haul Christmas for everyone. Um, so just let me know. I love comments. When I'm on the road, coming up this week, I'm probably going to do nothing but look at comments. So it's going to make this trip I'm not looking forward to a ton better if you guys give me some comments to read. So, hey, right down there, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet and you've checked us out a couple of times, or maybe this is your first time checking us out and you're like, hey, I kind of dig this channel, just hit that subscribe button. It feels good to do it. It's the right thing to do. Helps the channel grow. Hit that thumbs up. Helps us out a lot. Um, so until next time, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is John Minton, and this has been Talking Story.